it's officially earnings madness with some of the most popular largest companies and stocks out there reporting earnings this week. And so we're gonna be doing review videos on some very popular stocks like Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Apple, AMD, and more. So make sure you're subscribed for all of that content. But first, we're gonna be kicking things off here with a couple of stocks that I actually own myself, some big dividend stocks like 3M and PepsiCo, and then also a couple of uh, stocks that I do not currently own, like Caterpillar and Southwest Airlines, both of which are in industries that are very likely getting absolutely destroyed right now. So we're gonna hear what they have to say about the first quarter, what they're talking about for the next quarter, any kind of guidance for the rest of the year. Should be a lot of really interesting information. I'm really excited to talk to you guys and share with you everything that they had to say. But with all that said, we got a lot to cover. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hit the like button if you do. But let's go ahead and jump straight into this. Okay, let's kick things off here with one of the most talked about airline stocks out there right now, and that is Southwest Airlines, ticker symbol is LUV. And of course, we know that carriers are having a horrible time right now being forced to ground a ton of their planes as there's just no demand for travel right now due to that global issue with Airlines for America recently saying that carriers are burning up to $12 billion a month with passenger volumes down as much as 97%, which is just insane to think about. There's basically just no business for these companies right now. Now, most of that pain should really be seen in the second quarter, which we will talk about in just a second, but we just got first quarter results today ending in March, and while EPS did beat analyst estimates by a pretty large amount, it was still negative at a loss of 15 cents per share versus the positive 70 cents that they reported a year ago, which translates to a net loss of almost $100 million versus the nearly $400 million profit that they saw last year. So that's a pretty dramatic uh, change there. On top of that, raw sales uh, not only missed estimates, but they also declined by 18% year over year. And if you think about it, just an 18% drop in sales caused them to go from a nearly $400 million profit to a loss of almost $100 million. So what exactly is going to happen in Q2 when lockdowns were firmly in place throughout all of April and even when we come, come off of them, people are still very unlikely to be wanting to travel anywhere. Well, according to Southwest, they are predicting that there will be no material improvements in air travel trends in the spring and are therefore projecting a gigantic revenue decline of as much as 90 to 95 percent in both april and may which are obviously the first two months of the second quarter again look at what kind of destruction just an 18 percent drop did so you can only imagine what a 95 percent crash in sales is going to do and as a result they're being forced to offer more stock which obviously does dilute shareholders and also take on more debt which further deteriorates their balance sheet and in an effort to raise another 2.6 billion dollars. On the bright side, that does add more liquidity to the airline company with arguably the best balance sheet amongst their peers as they started the year with a current assets to debt ratio that was significantly higher than the rest, but it's all negative news no matter how you slice it. Still, the stock actually climbed by over 3% today, which was pretty surprising, although that does still leave them down almost 45% year to date and closer to 50% from their 52 week high. Pretty strange move though for the day considering that the market is pretty much flat. Uh, I would have definitely expected them to sink given the dark earnings report, but maybe investors are more optimistic about a turnaround happening later in the year as lockdowns start to be eased. Not a stock I'm buying myself though. Okay, moving on to a stock that I actually do own myself. We've got one of my absolute favorite new dividend stocks that I just started buying this year during the March lows of this crash, and that is PepsiCo, ticker symbol is PEP. The maker of very popular brands like Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Gatorade, Aquafina, bubbly and even snack foods like Frito-Lays all of which should be doing pretty well right now with everyone locked inside and likely eating and drinking a lot more and I know that that's unfortunately been the case for me in fact grocery store sales was one of the only spots in retail where sales actually went up according to the National Retail Federation March saw the largest monthly drop in history for overall retail sales and yet grocery and beverage store sales shot up by more than 25% which is 
pretty crazy. And as a result, not only did PepsiCo beat analyst estimates that were already trying to price that in, but they also increased their EPS by a double digit percentage year over year, while also growing their sales by another 8%, which is pretty high growth for an already massive company like PepsiCo, which is something that honestly a lot of people often criticize them for is that they have very low growth. But what in my opinion, what those people don't really understand is that that's not what kind of a stock this is. This is a very stable, massive company that, you know, whether it's right or wrong, they either crush the smaller players or just kind of buy them out entirely to make sure that they stay on top. And that's that, that's led to a very stable business over the years and just as a reliable of a dividend that has grown for almost 50 years in a row. Now, surprisingly, despite the strong performance, they actually pulled their 2020 outlook because they feel that this whole global issue and situation is just too difficult to predict in terms of how exactly their numbers will be throughout the year, which I do understand. However, they did also note that they are sticking to their commitment of spending billions of dollars on dividends and share buybacks this year. All in all, I think it was a pretty strong earnings report and that sent the stock climbing about another 1.5%, also leaving them just about flat year to date, which isn't too bad considering a lot of stocks are considerably down for the year. As for me though, I'm currently up about 18% on my position thanks to the recent rally not just in the stock, but also fueled by the overall market. So I'm probably not going to be adding shares at this time, but it's definitely a stock that I don't ever plan to sell as long as the business and the dividend are both intact, which they do seem to be at this time. All right, guys, moving on to stock number three. This is a stock that I've always been interested in owning, but just never really got around to buying. And that is, of course, Caterpillar. Ticker symbol is CAT. And this is actually a very popular stock among investors, which I frequently get asked to make videos about. But this is, of course, the largest construction equipment manufacturer in the world. And the reason I've always kind of liked them is because they are a very dominant leader in many of the industries and markets that they serve. And they also pay a very attractive dividend, which I know Seeking Alpha only shows three years of growth there, but that's actually wrong. It should be somewhere around 26 or 27 years. And it actually carries a yield of over 3.5%, which is also pretty good. Now, they obviously have huge ties to the global macro economy since they rely so heavily on manufacturing and construction, which does tend to go up and down with the economy. And that's led to some volatile years for them as sales saw a huge drop in 2016, along with a small drop last year, which was actually heavily due to the weakness that they saw in that country where this whole global issue kind of started. I'm not currently allowed to directly name them on YouTube, but I think you know which country I'm referring to. And uh, that makes this quarterly earnings super interesting to me because I'm very curious to know what Caterpillar has to say about everything that's going on and see how they feel about the global economy kind of getting destroyed right now and how that's weighing on the results. Well, yeah, it's not looking good. Sales dropped by a massive 21% in the quarter and no further guidance for the year was given. Digging a little deeper, EPS not only missed analyst estimates that were already incredibly low, but they were also down close to 50% year over year, which is a very large decline. Revenue also looked ugly, missing analyst estimates and declining by over 20%. As far as the reasons why the global issue continues to destroy the global economy, and that's causing a huge drop in demand for construction and mining sectors, with Caterpillar noting lower end user demand, basically saying that companies and probably even governments too, just can't afford to spend money on things like construction and infrastructure right now. So they're not going to be ordering new machines and equipment from Caterpillar at this time. In fact, just yesterday, Morgan Stanley downgraded Caterpillar as they predicted a multi-year downturn in non-residential construction, among other things like weak oil and commodity prices, causing a drop in demand for equipment. So just really bad news overall for Caterpillar. So you would expect that the stock dropped heavily, right? Well, <laughs> not so much. And I feel like this always happens with Caterpillar where the stock actually goes up on bad news, which has already happened a couple times in the past that we've talked about on the channel, but the stock is actually up slightly for the day, which doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Perhaps investors are focused on the longer term turnaround given that the stock is already down over 20% this year alone, but I think for me, I'd rather stick to safer options out there, even though that dividend does look very attractive to me. Having said that, one big dividend stock that I have actually invested in during this crash is 
3M, ticker symbol MMM, obviously famous for their post-it notes and scotch tape products, but given the current situation going on, they're probably going to be even more famous for their masks, which have seen explosive sales recently and will likely be in high demand for even a considerably long time after. So going into the earnings report, I was super curious to see how their medical supply products would help offset their macroeconomic exposure that typically causes their business to struggle during downturns, which actually caused negative revenue growth in five of the last six quarters uh, going into this year. Well, taking a look at their newly announced first quarter, it looks like uh, my original hypothesis came true as strong demand for personal safety products boosted their sales. Now, EPS was still down a few percentage points year over year, but it still easily beat analyst estimates while revenue not only beat estimates, but also grew a few percentage points year over year, helping them keep the momentum going of positive growth since the fourth quarter of last year. Now, just like we're seeing with many other companies out there, they had to withdraw 20 2020 guidance because this whole global issue is so difficult to predict. And again, keep in mind that 3M's business typically tanks when the economy is going down, but thanks to massive growth in their healthcare and consumer segments that grew 21% and 5% each respectively, it was enough to offset the otherwise heavy damage that they would typically take at a time like this when the economy is getting destroyed. They will, however, provide monthly sales information to keep investors in the loop with, with uh, everything going on, which as a shareholder, I'm personally happy about. I think that transparency is very much appreciated. But because the second quarter will be so horrendous for almost every company out there, they are suspending their share repurchase program and making aggressive cost reductions in order to protect employees and also continue paying their dividend, which I'm also very happy about, not just for you know protecting employees, which is very important, but also for the dividend because that is the primary reason that I own this stock, which speaking of which, that dividend still yields close to 4% despite having already grown for over 60 years in a row, which is just unbelievable. So anyway, good results for the quarter overall, and that sent the stock climbing by about 2.6% for the day, leaving them down only about 10% year to date. So there you have it guys, some pretty interesting earnings kicking off this week and we've got more to come. I think the next one will probably be Google, AMD, and a couple others as well. But uh, stay tuned for all of that content coming up and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about these stocks and any other companies reporting earnings down below in the comment section. Stay safe out there and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.